freedom and grace be with you. My name is John Clifton. Welcome to another episode of Hard Fire. Uh, this episode discusses uh, the U.S. Senate candidate on the Libertarian Party ticket, uh, and we are going to ask him a series of questions, and hopefully he will have very cogent and powerful answers. Uh, this is Jeffrey Russell, a retired uh, programmer. Yes, that's correct. And uh, he is going to be running in the November 7th election against Hillary Clinton and whoever that Republican guy is. You know, <laughs> I John Spencer. John Spencer. Well, I, I, and this is an odd situation because I've been on the other end of the mm -hmm. hard fire interviews of late. But I want to talk to you and, and get, get your views out there. I would like you to explain you know, your background and you know, why you're running for U.S. Senate. Well, I'm running for United States Senate because I was outraged at the position that Senator Clinton has taken on many of the issues. Specifically, uh, she supported the war in Iraq, mm -hmm. she has supported the Patriot Act, and she has supported this farce we call the Department of Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. And I'm very much opposed to all those things. She tries to make it look like all these things are the fault of President Bush and the Republicans, when in fact she and many of the other Democrats have supported all these things. I know the feeling that she has towed the line as a kind of establishmentarian, um, yet she's trying to also position herself as opposed to the right end of the establishment mm -hmm. table uh, while um, distancing herself from the left or progressive end of the establishment table. But, you know, but it's all like an internal debate between establishment people, her versus the Bush people. Um, what kind of dynamic would you introduce as a U.S. senator uh, in, in, as opposed to the uh, establishmentarianism of uh, Hillary Clinton? Well, uh, I'm not an established politician. Uh, I'm a, a total outsider here, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not beholden to anyone. Um, mm -hmm. I, I probably have, a, I'm sure I have a lot less money than either of yeah. my Democrat or Republican opponents, so I'm not beholden <laughs> to any big money or special interest groups. I'm just here to, to say what I honestly and truly believe in mm -hmm. and uh, what I what I believe Senator Clinton should be doing. I, if she were doing these things, mm -hmm. I would not be running. Well, what sets you apart from some of the other people now running in the final election here? There, there was a contest, contest in the primaries between her and another person named Tassini. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what, is your, um, what makes you different than, say, Howie Hawkins on the Green Party and other uh, people? Well, uh, as, as you know, I'm the libertarian candidate, mm -hmm. and uh, th there's a big difference okay. between uh, libertarians and liberals and right. greens, and uh, yeah. the, the difference being that uh, libertarian candidates, libertarians believe uh, very highly in individual freedom and yes. individual responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the other political parties seem to focus on just certain aspects of freedom and responsibility mm -hmm. and totally ignore all the others. The Libertarian Party right. is the only one that seems to look, look at all aspects of freedom, both your civil rights your, and your economic rights. Mm -hmm. uh, I just made that comment or question because it appears from what I've seen of the other person's literature, uh, say Mr. Hawkins is going to talk about opposing the Iraq war and, mm -hmm. um, and raising uh, a fuss over the invasions and destructions right. of civil liberties that um, right. Hillary has signed off on. Yes. Um, and so, uh, in terms of the campaign emphasis, there are some points of similarity. Yes, as well as right. Uh, on those issues, mm -hmm. uh, he and I are in total agreement. We, we are both very much opposed to the war, and both mm -hmm. very much opposed to the erosion of civil liberties, which mm -hmm. Senator Clinton has helped to implement. All right. L let's talk about w um, a couple of these major issues in particular. Uh, let's start with what should be one of the biggest issues, uh, Iraq. Uh, and she supports the war pretty much as it is um, and, and maybe would run more efficiently if she were operating. Mm -hmm. What would you do if, if you were the senator in terms of influencing policy? Well, um, as I said at the start, I, I mm -hmm. think we should try to bring our ho troops home from Iraq as quickly as possible without mm -hmm. endangering them. Okay. Um, I have heard it said that they could be brought home in as little as 30 days. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of a, a target date uh, of what I would try to shoot for is uh, I would try to convince mm -hmm. other senators and other legislators mm -hmm. that we should be trying to bring our troops home. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously, if I won the election, that would prove that a lot of people in New York State felt the same right. way. 
So I, I would try to present that to the other senators to say, maybe the the voters in your own district mm -hmm. feel the same way, and you ought to consider mm -hmm. uh, voting along with me on this. Uh, in, in other words, about as fast as you can get them on the planes and shuttle the planes back and get more right. off, you, you get them out. R right. Uh, like I said, I, mm -hmm. I, I've just heard some military people mm -hmm. say they think it could be done in 30 mm -hmm. days. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the target date that I'm shooting for. And let's uh, be more, even more specific about this, because some politicians talk about withdrawal over months or even years. Some of them only talk about removing troops, but they don't talk about getting rid of all these so-called temporary bases mm -hmm. that have been built, including the ones with, that with compartments and, and, um, and buildings that have 15-foot thick walls, mm -hmm. um, clearly indicating somebody wants to stay there a while. Yeah. Um, you, would you turn over the keys to all these 14 enduring bases that we've been building in Iraq? Uh, I would uh, bring all of our troops home as quickly as possible. And, and let me say, not, not just from mm -hmm. Iraq, uh, we have troops in, uh, I think, half of the countries around the world yes. right now, mm -hmm. um, uh, all over, you know, from uh, South Korea to Japan, Germany. Uh, I, I would bring them all home mm -hmm. uh, as quickly as possible. Great. Um, now, what would you say to people who will run past you all the uh, sound bites? You know, like, are you soft on terror? Are you appeasing Osama? Are you? No. What are you doing here? Yeah, I'm, I'm not soft on mm -hmm. terror. Um, assuming that the government is telling us the truth okay. and that Osama bin Laden really is mm -hmm. behind the September 11th attacks mm -hmm. and that Osama bin Laden really is hiding in a cave somewhere in Pakistan or Afghanistan, mm -hmm. that's what our government should be trying to do. I, if he's the one responsible for this terrorist act, mm -hmm. our government should be trying to, to bring him to justice. Mm -hmm. uh, Iraq had nothing to do with this. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we know that now. And uh, there was no reason for us to go and invade right. Iraq I in the name of fighting the terrorists who attacked us on September 11th. All right. And you said a lot of those <coughs> questions are still now up in the air about what was the nature of that original um, uh, destruction of, of mm -hmm. the World Trade Center um, five years ago. Um, there's that element, though, of people wanting to not feel like they're come off looking like we're weak or that we're cutting our, um, uh, and running. Mm -hmm. um, do you have an answer to the people who think we're cutting and running by um, exiting from Iraq? Well, I, I don't view it as cutting and running. I, I mm -hmm. view it as just being realistic about the whole thing. Okay. I, I don't believe that we can do any more good in Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it was a good thing that we got rid of Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. I, I believe he was a brutal dictator, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that he's gone. Mm -hmm. Wh whatever goodwill we built up as, uh, by, by doing this, I, I think, has now uh, mm -hmm. long been gone. Uh, you're making the important distinction between, you know, you recognize there was a problem, there was a bad dictator, yes. but that our, uh, our, our administration's uh, solution uh, our to that problem. Our presence there, I think, is making the situation worse, Yeah, where the people are now starting to view mm -hmm. United States troops as the aggressors, and they're taking it out on our, our troops. Right. So um, I'm thinking in terms of the libertarian principle that um, you have a problem, but initiating force to solve it. Uh, like by invading a country that hadn't right. attacked you is not the way to solve right. that problem. Right, uh, uh, exactly. Yep. Um, let's go to the related issue of in the wake of this war on terror, which somehow in, somehow or another Iraq got in, involved in that war, um, they've done other things like pass the Patriot Act and mm -hmm. similar legislation. Uh, they've even passed um, legislation and presidential orders that seem to make torture, you know, a, and, yes. um, and, and, and imprisonment of people uh, without uh, due process, uh, a kind of a norm, right, where instead of an exception. What do you think of those things? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm obviously not in favor of torture. In, mm -hmm. in fact, um, uh, President Bush made some comments the other mm -hmm. day about, well, I exactly what type of activities should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed, and uh, he wanted Congress to spell these things out mm -hmm. for him. and. My response to that would be, well, just follow the golden rule. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything you wouldn't want them doing to our soldiers if they captured them, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be doing to their soldiers. Yep. It, it's basically that simple. Right. And, and you would hold this view even if, say, the other, other countries were violating international law and, 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 and committing similar 
kinds of torture atrocities or well, right, civil well, we, atrocities. We, right. Well, we don't make ourselves better by doing the same things that make them bad. Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it, just because they're doing it doesn't make it all right for us to do it. Mm -hmm. it, it. In fact, if we start doing it, then that just gives them all the more reason to continue doing it, saying, well, you're doing it back to our guys. Why shouldn't we do it to yours? Right. Um, and what do you think should be done to the people in this administration? Uh, and I mean not at the bottom, but towards the top, uh, who uh, have signed off on all these kinds of um, rights deprivations well, against okay. the, our people and against foreigners. I, mean. well, I think they should be held uh, criminally accountable. I, I, if if mm -hmm. it can be proven that, that they have condoned the, the use of, of these actions, uh, th they should be brought to trial and, if found guilty, uh, held accountable for it, you know, yeah. imprisoned. I think that's an, an important distinction to make compared to the present administration, which, in which virtually nobody uh, in a more senior position has paid any price for any things that right. have happened over the last five years, whether it's um, the attacks on 9-11 itself or, uh, you know, for the Abu Ghraib torture um, mm -hmm. scandal and, and other related mm -hmm. um, outrages. Uh, what would you do about the, the NSA wiretapping and other surveillance activity? Uh, would you curtail it? Would you reverse it, put strict controls well, on it? Or what? Right. I, I don't see how the Patriot Act gave us any more power to fight terrorists than what we had already. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I've not yet been able to find anyone who could point to something in the Patriot Act saying, well, mm -hmm. it, it, here's the power that the government needed that they didn't have before. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems to me that the government always had the power to listen in on the phone conversations uh, of mm -hmm. people who were suspected of wrongdoing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what, what is new about the Patriot Act other than it just seems to lower the standard of mm -hmm. what the government considers wrongdoing. Right. I'm wondering how we can get our country back in terms of the way it was back before even, say, 2000. In 2001, it wasn't that good, let's mm -hmm. just put it that way. But certainly things have seemed to have slid toward the bottom of the abyss since. And I'm wondering, you know, how can we... What, what measures can be taken to actually restore some of the liberties that we've lost? The, the only thing we can do is stand up for ourselves. So the, the, the people have to stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing to do, obviously, is to just go out to the polls and vote. And, mm -hmm. and the first thing they have to do is to stop voting for the candidates who support the war, stop mm -hmm. voting for the candidates who support the Patriot Act, mm -hmm. stop voting for the, the candidates who support Homeland, the Department of Homeland Security, right. and all these things. That, that's the, the minimum they can do. Right. I'm going to stop you there, and we're going to resume in a moment here. I would like us to uh, listen to a very important PSA. Um, take a look at this, and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers of Hardfire, if you want freedom and you want it in your lifetime, you want it back in New York, you've got to educate yourself. You've got to keep yourself abreast of all the activities that are happening uh, within the liberty movement. Uh, one convenient way to do that is to support the Libertarian Party of New York. Uh, go to its website at ny.lp.org where you'll find a comprehensive list of uh, you know, press releases, um, activities, uh, candidates, the activities, and other um, vital information. You've got to do it. You've got to pick up the load, pick up the yoke, and help bring back freedom to New York. Do so and you will find yourself back in the land of peace and freedom. Now that was a pretty effective uh, public announcement, I think, and I'm glad that person was uh, such an articulate fellow. Who, Good looking um, guy. Yeah. Um, so here we are again with um, Jeff Russell, the Libertarian Party's Senate candidate this year against Hillary Clinton and uh, that Spencer guy. And we're going to go back to um, some of the main issues that you're, are you are emphasizing in this campaign. Um, what's a th and we've talked about the war and the Patriot Act mm -hmm. and, and other surveillance and other um, unseeming activity of the government in the last few years. Um, is there a third issue that you would like to talk about? Well, uh, a big issue is, to me, is the draft. Mm -hmm. Because I honestly believe that we are headed towards a military draft in this country. And I think it will very possibly come within the next six years, which is to say within the, the next the term of this next senator, whoever is elected, mm -hmm. uh, will have to vote for a draft. And I fully expect that if it did come up for such a vote, I believe Senator Clinton would support a draft. 
uh, assuming she's still a senator and mm -hmm. not president at that point. Yeah. Um, this is uh, outrageous um, in a sense of, you know, New York is the home of the original anti-draft movement when, in 1863 when Lincoln first yes. um, broached the subject and, and instituted it. There were riots in New York City. It was a wild situation. It was sort of depicted in the Gangs of New York movie for, mm -hmm. of a few years ago. Um, what do you think will happen in 2000, whatever, seven or eight, uh, with the young people in this country when they're told to go to Iraq and bleed and die for oil or Israel or the American hegemon? Or yeah. what, what, what do you think is going to be the uh, social I people? I don't know what will happen. I, I would like to think that they would resist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd like to think that's something similar to what happened during Vietnam when we mm -hmm. uh, had a military draft, that people would just refuse to go mm -hmm. when it was their turn to be inducted. They would either not show up at the induction center, or mm -hmm. if they show up at the induction center, they just refuse to take the oath uh, uh, of service. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would hope that uh, people would stand up to the government. Um, I don't know if that will happen or not, though. I think it would be a very encouraging sign if they put down their iPods mm -hmm. and put, took up their protest signs and, and really started you know, ma raising a ruckus, because they changed things the last time they did that. Yeah. The Youth of America, when they stood up to the establishment with Vietnam, um, it ended up turning into an amendment that, um, you know, to, to, that, that, that you know, um, eliminated um, the draft in this country in 73, uh, and, and other changes that sort of eliminated our um, attachment to um, the warfare state. Mm -hmm. um, are there other ways to reach young people? In, in, in your campaign or in this time to um, get them on board with a, a pro-liberty message? Uh, uh, are there other ways to reach them? Yes. Well, uh, I have spoken to some college groups, mm -hmm. and in, in fact, uh, one of the things that I'm planning to emphasize in my campaign, mm -hmm. uh, my advertising campaign is going to mm -hmm. be geared towards college students. I, I'm okay. looking at college newspapers <coughs> because I really think that mm -hmm. gives me the most bang for the buck. Uh, they're the ones who are going to be most most impacted mm -hmm. by the, the war in Iraq and the draft I if it comes mm -hmm. up. Uh, they're the ones who, mm -hmm. you know, are going to have to live with the Patriot Act the, the rest of their lives. All right. I, I have a couple of suggestions for you from coming from a different campaign in that you can talk to young people about issues that uh, are particularly of interest to them that only our party speaks to. You know, one is the draft. Right. We're, we're, we're only group that's against it, whether Bush is behind it or Hillary's right. behind it, um, or um, lim lowering the drinking age to 18, mm -hmm. you know, if they're going to be considered um, old enough to go to war, right. they should be old enough I, to drink. I agree, yeah. Uh, you know, it, not making them um, it mandatory for them to invest in Social Security with payroll taxes, right. um, so they're not hooked onto that at the, you know, from the beginning. You know, those kind of things might help yeah. um, attract them. Um, and um, the draft is an issue that's, that's very vital, um, should it come, come to pass. But it, I don't know if the government's going to be that stupid. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, to, to come up with another draft? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, but let's go back to your campaign. Um, uh, uh, what success have you had in you know, getting media attention and, and, and some focus um, put upon you? you know? Well, uh, obviously, minimal campaign. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I get an occasional news story here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I travel around the state, I, I mm -hmm. try to contact the local newspapers, local radio stations. Yeah. Once in a while, one of them will call me back uh, and run mm -hmm. a small story on me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I send out press releases. Uh, most of the major media outlets I ignore my press releases, but yeah. again, sometimes some of the smaller ones will, will pick up on the story, and then mm -hmm. some of the smaller newspapers will reprint them. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, Considering that the major party candidates are dealing with budgets mm -hmm. in the millions and right. I'm dealing with a budget in the thousands, yeah. it's very difficult for me to try to get my message out on an mm -hmm. equal footing to compete with them. Right. Um, and it's, it's perplexing because I've had the same situation running in 2000 against um, yes. Hillary Clinton in that you would think in New York market, uh, which is the biggest New York uh, media market in the country practically, uh, there would be enough media to go around to focus on all the candidates in a race involving Hillary. Mm -hmm. Yet, um, she got all the attention along with the Republicans. Yeah. Uh, and it's like they're protecting her. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you have a sense, get a sense that they're protecting, well, that's my impression. Do you get a sense yeah. that they're protecting Hillary Clinton? Well, uh, I didn't 
have that feeling last time. Um, last time, I think, uh, being it was her first time running for public office, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people felt that the election might be much closer than it was, and it came mm -hmm. down to the the wasted vote syndrome of where they just people just wanted to focus on the main two. Mm -hmm. I I think this time around, uh, it it's not nearly so likely to happen. People are mm -hmm. kind of looking at Senator Clinton as being a shoe in, mm -hmm. and so I tell them that. Yeah. Uh, a vote for peace and liberty is never, ever a wasted vote. All right. That's important to, to uh, at least emphasize the positive. Um, the, uh, it, it just strikes me that um, it was the White House, by the White House's own count, the Clinton White House in, around 2000, there were 44 scandals involving the Clintons mm -hmm. that were being investigated or for which people had been actually indicted yeah. or convicted. Uh, and yet there was no discussion of that by the New York press the so-called toughest press in the world right. in, during Hillary's campaign. Uh, it just makes you cry <laughs> about <laughs> the, sta the status of journalism in our country, that they won't cover a fine gentleman like you or maybe back then me or whatever, That's but right. they will um, do their best to cover for um, the right. sins of uh, the establishment character who's running for office. Um, what would you think in terms of um, uh, your legacy, you know, if you got into the office, um, what would be the thing you would want people to most remember about you, you know, in, in your Senate tenure, uh, in terms of what you did, accomplishments, you know, what would you like to achieve and, and be remembered for? Well, as a I, if I did get elected, mm -hmm. I would like to think that uh, the, the three things we've talked about before, bringing the troops home, mm -hmm. if I could be in, in some small way instrumental in helping to bring the troops home, mm -hmm. if I could in some way be instrumental in helping to repeal the Patriot Act yeah. and abolish the Department of Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't think that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. frisking old ladies and little children at mm -hmm. airports is doing anything to help yeah. make us safer from terrorists. Yeah. Um, and, and I'd like to see us return to the time mm -hmm. when we didn't have to go through these things. Well, I like John Stossel's description of what he thought TSA meant, you know, thousands standing around. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of government employees, uh, you know, who really have no good <laughs> valid reason to be other than uh, to harass old people uh, and people who don't fit the profile, uh, yeah. if I can use the, the phrase profiling, uh, of, of a likely terrorist. Um, yeah, that, that is a good thing to be remembered for. Um, and, and again, if you, if you did nothing else but show the way by drafting the legislation and showing what libertarian legislation mm -hmm. looks like, like the way Congressman Ron Paul does, yes. um, you would have a, le a legacy as far as I'm, uh, as I'm concerned. Um, if you did lots of public appearances, wrote lots of columns and press mm -hmm. releases that carefully explained the basis for your actions and, and your legislation, and that's a way to, um, to have a lasting uh, legacy. Um, and do you see yourself doing anything jointly with Ron Paul, you know, in Congress? You know, uh, because sometimes there's a senator and a congressman who are putting a, a bill together. Well, it, it is possible, mm -hmm. I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, mm -hmm. he's been in Congress for a long time, and I, I'm sure that mm -hmm. he could uh, teach me quite a bit about what's going on down there. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, I'm sure he could. And I'm, I just like the idea that we're going to try to build a mass of libertarians. Uh -huh in major office um, now or someday, yeah. you know, and that there would be some connections made between people once they were there together to make something happen. And, and that there could be enough of you in Congress and in the Senate to uh, be a libertarian caucus, uh -huh. you know, that, that could influence policy and, and pivot things your way. What, what about the practical situations, like the past week where three Republican senators started to stand up to George Bush on changing the rules about torture? and um, then back down under mm -hmm. tremendous arm twisting. Mm -hmm. uh, what if you're in the room where they start twisting arms? What, what, what are you going to do? Twisting arms? Well, yeah. uh, will you I don't sign know, off I, on torture? Or I, I would <laughs> not sign off on torture. Uh, mm -hmm. I, if by some miracle I should get elected, mm -hmm. uh, I would have the attitude that I w wouldn't stand a chance of being reelected. So right. I wouldn't have to worry about any arm twisting. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just do whatever I believe to be right and mm -hmm. whatever I believe would best represent the, the people of this country in mm -hmm. New York State. Um, yeah. I, I think that's the problem with many politicians mm -hmm. is that they start focusing on winning the election rather than doing mm -hmm. what's right. And mm -hmm. that's why we're in the mess that we're in today. Yeah. And before I forget, the, the one question I should ask 
uh, because people will ask this about people who talk about being against the war and say against the war, much the way the war on terror has been waged. What would be your alternative way to deal with the war on terror or even uh, or to deal with terrorism? Would there be a war? Would it be definitely a police action? Um, how would you deal with bad dictators? Uh -huh. That well, kind of uh, as I said, uh, assuming Osama bin Laden really is responsible mm -hmm. and, and that he's hiding in the cave, I, I think it is legitimate for the United States government to, to try to bring him to justice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that invading Afghanistan was the best way to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, I might have tended to, to opt for the you know one soldier, one bullet uh, mm -hmm. type of strategy okay. uh, rather than going in full force and starting a war because uh, I mm -hmm. think the same thing may be happening in Afghanistan uh, as happening in Iraq, that the people are starting to view us as the bad guys, yeah. and really they shouldn't be viewing us as the bad guys. Very well. Um, for people who want to find out more about you, I, I think they've been flashing a website. Okay. Could you tell us about your uh, website a little okay, bit? Okay. Uh, my website is russellforsenate.org. That's mm -hmm. Russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L, for, F-O-R, senate.org. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got quite a bit of information about me out there on the website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got my positions on many of the issues. Okay. It's got a button where you can click on and make a donation. So I hope some of you will do that tonight. Oh, that's a very important part of the mix, isn't it? Um, um, I, and I think you were pretty um, good on that issue um, with the, uh, you know, getting out there early uh, within our libertarian mm -hmm. universe and putting out lots of um, mm -hmm. fundraising uh, mailings to uh, raise the funds you have. Uh, and that um, regardless of how this election turns out, I hope things really work out uh, uh, well in terms of uh, you getting your say in, in front mm -hmm. of major media. Yes. Um, and um, yeah, if there is there any other thing that you wanted to say in, in like 10 seconds before we go? Please vote for me on November 7th. I need every vote I can get. Okay. That sounds like a pretty good coda for, for your candidacy. I'm, I'm presenting to, to the, the world. Uh, Jeff Russell, your next U.S. Senator, if you will make him. Vote for him on November 7th. Uh, until that point uh, and until our next show, uh, so long for this episode of Hard Fire. <laughs> <laughs>